a biblically accurate Jesus cosplay should be anti-capitalist, should be community minded and should be benevolent without the misogyny and most obviously not an anti-Semite. Hey guys, it's Julesy and we are back for another video. If you are new here, definitely give a big thanks to our sponsor, Audible. But if you true to hear, why haven't you used my audible.com link, audible.com slash Julesy, or text Julesy to 500-500 and get your first 30 days free on Audible. Whomever you are out there in the world, come on over and join my book club, the SBG Book Club. We have tons of recommendations on great books to read. We read with community. I just saw a TikTok of somebody saying they couldn't get through Octavia Butler or Toni Morrison, which is very understandable. And I'm like, those books are meant to be read in community and come on over because they, Parable of the Sower and all of Toni Morrison's collection is available on Audible. We have read several of their books in the SVG book club. I have used my Audible credits to purchase these audiobooks and allows me to get through the readings as someone who's a content creator, who's a grad student, and who runs a book club. And so Audible is a big help. I love listening to it in the car. It just makes my life so much easier as someone who, the various components of my life, like all three, the content I produce, the schoolwork I do, and then the book club I run. I do a lot of reading <laughs> throughout the week and Audible really helps me get through that reading. So use my link, audible.com slash Julesy or text Julesy to 500-500. Get your first 30 days free on Audible <laughs> and check out their wide range of auditory treats from audiobooks to original series, podcasts, all sorts of great things are available on Audible. So come on over to Audible and then come on over to the SBG Book Club and let's have a good time. And shout out to Audible for making this collaboration with Henny, who helped to co-write and co-research this video possible. Please turn off your ad blocker, cause babes, we did a lot of work. There's a whole team behind me making this content possible. I wanted to discuss one of the major themes that we have consistently seen across the history of hip hop music. Well, how I would describe it is Jesus and God imagery that kind of meets at the intersection of Judeo-Christian and Islamic iconography that puts the black male rapper in the same category as Jesus or God-like. And I wanted to look into the history of how that imagery came to be and how it's being commodified and used for personal gain, especially in today's era, while black male rappers might be called out for bad or even bigoted behavior, and they may weaponize their identity and utilize this iconography to say that they should not be criticized for things they have done. Hmm. A few names come to mind, but let's get into this. <laughs> Religion has not just been a theme, but also a cornerstone of hip hop since its inception. In the early 1980s, a religious group known as the Nation of God and Earth was already an established way of life amongst poor black communities in New York City, thus making its way into some of the most influential works from rap collectives like the Wu-Tang Clan. Now, the Nation of Gods and Earth was also known as the 5% nation. It was founded in Harlem by a former member of the Nation of Islam known as Clarence 13X. Clarence 13X had a fundamental disagreement over the identity and true nature of God, which he believed to be one and the same as the enlightened black man. To quote an NPR article, Clarence 13X also rejected the traditional Muslim belief that God was separate from man. Instead, he claimed that the black man was God personified and that each black man could cultivate and eventually realize his godliness through meditation, study, and spiritual and physical fitness. And this is an excerpt from God, the Black Man and Jesus Five Percenters by Christopher Johnson for NPR. Now, this centering of specifically 
black men as God and God in the self, a rendition that moves God away from the community and centers the individual against all others. This is a narcissistic playground that rapper turned capitalist have played on for decades. Interestingly, the name 5% comes from the teaching that the members are of the 5% that know the ultimate truth. The masses who are blind to the knowledge are the 85%. Then there are those who seek to gatekeep the truth and subjugate black communities to keep us ignorant. That would account for the 10%, which leaves us with the 5%, a community that has uniquely fostered a bevy of wannabe rappers. And they have been the prototype for most of the Islamic references found in hip hop. <laughs> One of the most prolific ideologies from this 5% community is the concept of the Asiatic black man. African-American historian George Horn recounts to history what is coined the Tokyo Negro connection in this idea that the Asiatic aspect of the black man is actually rooted in the Asiatic nations. And particularly that Japan had become a touchstone and lodestar for modeling black liberatory communities. It is the one topic that noted nemeses, W.E.B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington solidly agreed on. So much so that in 1912, Washington asserted, there is no other race living outside of America whose fortunes the Negro peoples of this country have followed with greater interest or admiration than Japan. In no other part of the world have the Japanese people a larger number of admirers and well-wishers than amongst the black people of the United States. This idea that African-Americans belong to the Asiatic nation, which helps to make the nation of Islam's Asiatic black man ideology that positions the black man as a progenitor of all life and civilization intended to combat the established Eurocentric Christianity that the United States used to build and reinforce systems of oppression that kept black communities subdued. And hence why Japan, when you think about how it went on in to the mid 20th century to participate in what side of warfare it took. Japan really worked well in sort of this ideology that kind of crosses between a more black nationalist Islamic understanding and black political thinkers who might've been more steeped in, uh, in Christianity. Now, and, th and this kind of sets the playing ground for how these black Islamic beliefs translate over to a more Christian lens. Now with all this discussion of the nation of Islam of five percenters and the Moorish science temple, it may seem that I'm actually laying the groundwork to discuss one of the ever more elusive rappers, J Electronica. But I'm actually laying historical ground that explains the prevalence of mainstream black rappers castrating themselves as Jesus or God-like. The ever hip hop influential 5% nation man adopted offshoots of the aforementioned Islamic and Moorish science, creed, code, and culture by demonstrating a mastery of the 5% organization's 120 lessons. After mastery, members take on what is called a righteous name, which we clearly see illustrated throughout the hip hop nomenclature as the 5% grew in popularity with hip hop with early rap collectives looking to expand their ranks and communities by pulling in members who understood that the burgeoning hip hop space was a better alternative to pursue success than selling drugs or joining gangs. If you look at early hit rap collectives, many of them that are steeped in this sort of 5% theology position themselves as more conscious or a more enlightened community. Now the rhetoric specifically of the Asian black man being a living God set the template for many future acts in hip hop. Rappers like Old Dirty Bastard, RZA, Jizza, and later Rakim all famously followed the 5%. Then we have Africa Bombada who pulled from the Nation of Islam to create the Zulu Nation in his own attempt to spread ideals that were socially and politically conscious. In all, the rise of hip hop was largely built upon a shared theme of Islamic black nationalist rhetoric, predominantly from the 5% nation and therefore the Nation of Islam. And then this individualistic outlook that allowed early hip hop 
artists to center themselves as a conscious rapper leader, curating a golden age of hip hop that was largely spurred on by the cult of personality and self-proclaimed leaders looking to make it. If you go back and look for yourself, you can see that there are a number of artists throughout hip hop who have regarded or alluded to themselves as some sort of prophet, wise one, or soothsayer, alluding to the ideology that God is a black man, which is actually not a far leap from black Islamic Moors to a more Judeo-Christian take that Jesus is a black man. <laughs> A lot of the shift from Islamic black nationalist rhetoric to the performance of black Christian cosplay can largely be attributed to the general population public perceptions around hip hop, as well as its growing popularity as it became the bedrock of mainstream music. Think of Tipper Gore, the 90s, a lot was going on there. You know, the innate black power and Islamic messaging in a genre that stood against white supremacy out of principle was easily demonized by anyone who wasn't black or in community with black people. And you also have to think that when black cultural products enter into the mainstream, they are sanitized, which we've talked about in various videos where I've touched on cultural appropriation and the advent of social media platforms like TikTok. Then you factor in this reality of the sort of sanitization of the black cultural product, right? Where the more radical aspects of it are demonized, those that are anti-white, are demonized with the reality of the almost immediate embrace of hip hop from influent black experiences after its golden age in the 90s. And you begin to notice a shift in messaging. So as we begin to go into the late 90s, early 2000s, we get, we get a much more capitalistic output in the rhetoric of hip hop music. Hip hop became less about empowering black men as living gods of wisdom and more about empowering black men through attaining capital while praising the established Christian God for said success and support. One of the earlier mainstream examples of this would be Nas and Puff Daddy on Hate Me Now, which serves as an anthem for financial gains as moral superiority backed by God. Now in the visual, Nas likens his experience with his community becoming increasingly envious of his success and accumulated wealth to the religious persecution of Jesus, a man who was infamously not wealthy, not greedy or self-involved. If nothing else, we can firmly say that Jesus was not a capitalist. Nas is seen dragging a cross at the start of the video and subsequently popping bottles and celebrating his wealth alongside 1P Diddy. Hate Me Now was the lead single on the biblical referencing album titled I Am, which was a follow-up to Nas's debut album, It Was Written, both biblical allusions for how God references himself and his word. Nas made a career out of likening himself to God or touting himself as a Masonic figure in hip hop through either his lyrics, album titles, or upfront visuals. It's clear he believed that his success was ordained by a higher power and viewed his raps as lessons that could lead a community. Now the easiest pivot here is to Jay-Z or rather Jehovah or Hov, a play off the Judaic reverence for God as Jehovah. Well, we all know his real name is Sean Carter. Jay-Z's claim to fame is him not having to write down his raps. Rather, he goes into the booth and he spits off the top of his dome. And this ability is something that he has often regarded as channeling a higher message or simply being a conduit for the truth. Most of his lyrics are actually blatantly misogynistic and capitalistic. So I think it's safe to assume based on Jay-Z's prophet's earring that God is at least a very rich man, like materially rich man to this day. Jay-Z's raps are circling the drain of late stage capitalism as he touts a billionaire lifestyle as an ethical, just and necessary way while also investing in private probation companies that actually inflate police department budgets. Jay-Z's commercial success over Nas plainly lifted Jay up as a god in hip hop 
to its less conscious consumers in that because he was actually positioning himself in a more capitalistic tone and less about black man as God and savior to a more because of God, I am very wealthy and ordained that he was able to reach a broader audience than Nas, who's often positioned as a more black conscious rapper. And this mirrors the genre's core values shifting towards capital and exploitation and away from the more community building. And, and it's not to say that this Asiatic black man ideology, it doesn't have its own issues with misogyny and was in fact, you know, the sort of foundation for a narcissistic playground, as I said earlier. But it, you know, at least we can extrapolate from the way that theology moved through the community that it was still centered, even though there was a leader, that that leader was fostering some sort of community versus now this godlike man is simply hoarding wealth for private and personal gain. And as this, these core values shift, rappers now have labels and are signing other rappers and exploiting their peers and communities to get ahead. Literally, the representation of Diddy, his entire hip hop career. And Jay-Z is so self-righteously sanctified that rightfully calling Jay-Z a capitalist has Sean Carter be moaning that the term capitalist is equivalent to the hard R N word. And they try to lock us out of it. They start inventing words like, you know, capitalists and, you know, things like that. I mean, you know, we've been called nigger and monkeys and shit. I don't care. I don't, th those words y'all come up with, y'all got to come up with stronger words. You got too much money to be that dumb, bro. But here we are. The late 90s, early 2000s hip hop of P. Diddy and Jay-Z really did usher in a new era of moral bankruptcy that kept individual pockets lined fat and their egos as personally unchecked as their bank balance. Now, what we've laid out has obviously set the stage for the passion of one Kanye West, who debuted in the hip hop scene as a pseudo conscious, but definitely educated artist with a saint-like mother. And as his viewpoints have veered more towards a bigoted perspective, Kanye has leaned further into this Christian iconography, positioning himself as a speaker of truth, really made it easy for Kanye to don the thorn crown of his equally egotistical predecessors and liken himself to Jesus Christ during the crucifixion. You know, as a black man in America, I understand it's easy to see the parallels when both Jesus and black men trying to better their communities were murdered by the state publicly. But the parallels for most rappers are topical at best. A biblically accurate Jesus cosplay should be anti-capitalist, should be community minded and should be benevolent without the misogyny and most obviously not an anti-Semite. Kanye's career has been littered with truly astounding lapses in judgment to portray himself as Christ-like in the heat of the most egregious acts, whether it be through a capitalistic anthem for God promised riches in Jesus walks to reframing his arrogance as necessary truth for the saving of hip hop in a sensational Rolling Stone magazine cover and interview or adopting the name Jesus that obviously rhymes with Jesus in a pursuit as wealth as the ultimate marker of holy distinction from his peers. It is most notable that every time very recently Kanye has talked about religion, it's almost always preceded by, I am one of the few black men billionaires and nobody wanted to acknowledge it, but I am holy, I am divine. Nowadays, he also has a church that while it puts out impressive choir concerts for prosperity gospel, is probably doing a lot more work as a significant tax write-off, if not a full-blown tax haven for Kanye. He can hate on Kris Jenner all he wants, but that lady definitely put him on to some well-paying capitalistic pursuit. It's just fascinating that Kanye's invoking of himself as Jesus, the godlike, anytime he's approached with solid criticism, has emboldened other young artists to invest in such imagery early on in their careers. 
you know, a mass Kanye at his listening party concert for his 10th studio album, Donda, walked out of a stage set that modeled his childhood home as a church, hand in hand onto the patio with the baby and Marilyn Manson as a signal that Kanye the God was saying these men could not be canceled. Unfortunately, the baby has attempted to enact the egotistical I am Jesus, the tormented son, similarly in the vein of Kanye, without the substantial career of Kanye. While the baby debuted with a unique but easily exhausted delivery, just enough good looks, barely enough height, and a promise as a rapper to offset that Napoleon complex and gain some significant cosigns, he really only had one crossover pop charting hit in Rockstar, but way too quickly into his career, his words and violent behavior shaved a few feet off of his already short career, which led him to try his hand at extending the 15 minutes through a cheap gimmick of cosplaying Jesus. In one of his latest singles, Tough Skin, what made the baby's decision and creative direction for that music video so jarring in contrast to rappers before him was his lack of association with any branding of conscious rap, one of the furthest divinations from the Asiatic black man as wise savior, an already tired industry rite of passage, graduated into the realm of unbearable. And what followed suit was the world sleeping through whatever sermon Jonathan Kirk thought he was giving with them chattering chiclet teeth, <laughs> baby. His album went on to only sell 17,000 units and approximately this was 85% less than his previous entry on the Billboard 200 charts. However, it is likely that this foray into Christ-like imagery and this obviously grand decline marks the natural pivot from hood rapper with violent tendencies to a more Moorish science 5% performance of shiny white teeth utilizing big eloquent words and discussions of black family man, generational wealth as a cornerstone of his brand that allows him to retain significant relevancy at, amongst at least a silo of the black community as modeled by one Clifford Harris, otherwise known as T.I. This thing with black male rappers in Jesus is that the opportunity to don a crown of thorns will never stop presenting itself to men who feel the pressure to perform solidarity with the community that they're ultimately siding against with their aspirations of capital through exploitation. The disconnect is both deeply ethical and moral. And while that Jesus cosplay might be the solve for most bruised egos while they still collect a hefty check, it does look like in the baby's record sales, the case for that man, he might be actually <laughs> pouting for a real reason. <laughs> It seems every generation of hip hop brings us another inarguably talented black man with the Messiah complex. Our most recent second, or I think at this point we're at fourth, the baby wasn't, you know, the talented black son, but definitely Nas and okay, now we are here. Whatever coming this is of the music industry's favorite benevolent, ho-temp adjacent, misogynist light rapper, Kendrick Lamar, Kung Fu Kenny is almost a return to the early days of hip hop's golden age with clear influences from the Wu-Tang Clan and therefore, you know, 5% ideology that runs through both his rap style and aesthetics. Kendrick has made allusions to the Messiah throughout his career, but the most obvious instances actually come on his two most recent albums, Damn and Mr. Morale. Now the former album's track titles spell out a clear message for his own disciples, and the latter album employs trusted Masonic symbols and imagery in which Kendrick communicates his anticipation of public ridicule for Mr. Morale's album message. It's funny because one of the lead singles from the Damn album featured a reenactment of The Last Supper as a centerpiece, but even after that video came out, Kendrick in interviews positioned the Damn tracklist as subtle. 
Most recently for Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, Kendrick hit the iconic cross pose on the visual for the single N95. And while Kendrick attempts to work through traditional black conservatism to more progressive thinking, he still retreads the basic misogyny that keeps cis men in mental and emotional bondage. Even the titling of the album with Kendrick taking on the title of Mr. Morale, a wise man who has had a higher responsibility placed on him, he offers up his disciples a inconclusive 73 minute therapy session as gospel interluded by the troubled man Kodak Black and a big step for men everywhere saving up for a podcast mic. While those who are most oppressed by this rhetoric are made to feel and look like Judas for finding the whole thing reductive at best and regressive at worst. Would a true messiah command the world stage to reinforce tired gender wars? Every instance of black male rappers cosplaying as Christ on the cross feels less like an apt analysis of their place in America and more and more like a power play, a move to extend their careers past any folly and instead positioning them as enlightened leaders of the community because of the wealth they have maintained regardless of any transgressions. As hip hop has centered itself in the cultural zygus and become synonymous with pop music, rappers are now a baker's dozen a dime. And unfortunately, it's unlikely to be no end to the invoking of Jesus or God iconography for badly behaving, mildly bigoted rapping men. But at least I hope this discussion helps us to think a little bit broader about the messaging that we are absorbing, the imagery that we are seeing, and how often we as consumers enable this com commodification of God and Christ-like iconography for personal gain while it often hides the harm that is being replicated to some of the most oppressive communities within the overall black community. Thanks for watching and I hope to hear your respectful comments on whatever side of the spectrum you sit on, whether you agree or disagree, keep it respectful, but I can't wait to hear you comment along to the video. Hope you enjoyed. Deuces!